color. Okay. I want to show you um, a luminous secondary color here. Uh -huh. So let's take um, purple, okay, secondary sure. color. Uh, one way that I've seen it mixed mm -hmm. many times, people grab their cadmium red, right, mm -hmm. and their ultramarine blue. Okay. And they will mix that to the temperature according to how much blue or red they want, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they'll test it for their value on the canvas. They'll put a spot there and go, okay, that needs to be, let's say it needs to be a little lighter, right? Mm -hmm. So put white into that. Hmm. All right. And now they've got the value they want. Uh -huh. And here's the purple they've got, right? right. Remember that purple, because here's how I do it. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, one thing to be aware of is that cadmium red mixes like an orange. And when I say it mixes like an orange, it goes gray if you put it into blue. So I always make sure that I have something out that leans off to the purple side on my mm -hmm. reds. Mm -hmm. And I actually break my color wheel. You put them out in the order of the color wheel, right? Mm -hmm. I break it here between these two reds, because there's no other primary that doesn't go two ways, like I cadmium see. red doesn't okay. go two ways. Cadmium red is great at killing anything mm -hmm. that sits over on the cool side of the palette. In fact, that's the main thing I use it for when I'm out painting. This is a lizard and crimson. Permanent rose would have worked as well. Mm -hmm. Now what I do here, instead of mixing for the color first and then adjusting for value, I'm going to mix for value first and then adjusting for color. I'll show you what I mean. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to mix this a lizard and crimson to be the same value. Let's say my target value is this purple right, right here. Right? Mm -hmm. I want it to be the same value as that. Now, it's a little bit hard sometimes in separate piles to tell which one is darker right. or lighter. Right. But if you take a spot and just set it on top of mm -hmm. one another, it becomes real easy to see. Yeah, so yeah. this needs to go a little That's darker true. still. That's true. We'll see how that one does. That looks a little... More like it. That's looking pretty good there. I could still mm -hmm. go here darker, I think, with this lizard and crimson. Mm -hmm. So, right, that's as far as I want to go. That actually went a tiny bit too dark. So now I've gone too far. There we are. So there's my lizard and crimson mm -hmm. at the value I want. Mm. The other thing I'm going to need. My ultramarine blue. Hmm. Now, I don't really bother cleaning off the brush because these are going to get combined together anyway. But right, right. Uh, essentially, I want um, I want a blue and I want a red to combine. So now I want to mix this blue to the same value again. Mm -hmm. I test it on there. Well, that looks pretty good. I can live with that. Mm -hmm. That looks good too. Now these are a little jarring <coughs> when they come together like that, kind of like that electric vibrating yeah. edge kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm just going to take them down a tiny bit like this. I've, I've got a little bit of the red into the ultramarine, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to take a little bit of that ultramarine that was on the brush and put it into the red. Hmm. So now I've got a red, and I've got a blue. And my red's got some blue in it, my blue's got some red mm -hmm. in it, but they're still mm -hmm. distinct colors and they're the same value. Hmm. So when I bring them together now, you can already see on the palette this is happening. Sure. Now you and that's how I make my violet. You start, oh, so wow. let me set that next to this. So they got that vibrant, that one on top of the, or mixed in with the other, actually it's, they'll show through. Yeah. That, that, and it that becomes... Now, because they're the <clears> same value, they will blend in your eye. There's an effect called vanishing edges. When you take two similar colors, mm -hmm. uh, which are the same value, and you step back, you won't be able to see that edge. And it's something I can't probably show you on camera, but if I were to take you know, this red and this blue mm -hmm. and set them mm -hmm. side by side, you step back, it becomes a blurry edge. You can see it's more red on this side, that mm -hmm. spot is, and it's more blue on the other side. Mm -hmm. But you can't really see where the line is in the middle. Okay? Well, we rely on that when we want to have a luminous color. Mm -hmm. That's what creates that illusion of luminosity, having these colors come together. Now, to put this into a real-life kind of situation, we don't mm -hmm. usually use the most brilliant purple that we can ever have, right? Mm -hmm. 
So how do we grade that down? Well, I could grade down these individual colors. Yeah. So that yeah. would be one way to do it. Or the other thing I could do is what would I add into a purple typically to grade it down? It would be the complement of purple, yellow, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So I could take a yellow and put that in. What's going to happen if I drop a yellow in among that? It's going to be very uh, contrasty and very mm -hmm. electric. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one look that will give a little bit different mood. Or I can use something very subdued. I can drop sort of a yellowish gray in there or any kind of gray yeah, in there. Yeah. Well, let's take like a yellow ochre, mm -hmm. which is pretty similar to that value anyway. Sure. Even that is pretty jarring among those well, colors. That's true. So I'm going to tone that mm -hmm. down a little bit. I'm just going to drop a little bit of this. I'll drop a little of this into it. <laughs> that went off to the green side. I could have done it off to the orange side as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, in fact, do that. I'm going to do both. I'm going to take an orange one and a green one. I'm darkening it here. So I have an orange one and a green one. I mm. scoop up both of those mm -hmm. with both of these and now put that through there. Hmm. Now I'm graying down this violet, right? Yeah, yeah. But I'm doing it by introducing a couple of other colors that are also mm -hmm. pure and leaving all that pureness come through. Uh, so this becomes that area of grayed down violet. Mm -hmm. If I wanted, I could drop a green in there too. Like so you don't have to thoroughly mix green. all these. In fact, if into I, a gray if I did or thoroughly mix yeah, it, yeah. then it will go like house paint. It'll be like that first uh, yeah. purple that we had there. So, wow. which is why I mix for. Uh, value first and mm -hmm. then combine the ingredients. Right? Because if I have to add white to this now, sure, sure. then all of these get mixed together yeah, yeah. and we get again that flat paint like yeah, we had here. I see. Huh. So I'm going to mix a green to that value and we can put that through too. And just pick it all up together here. So we can even do a transition this way, right? So we mm -hmm. have this sort of gray violet over yeah, here. Yeah. And now we'll go to a greener mm. violet over in that direction. We can lean that over to a, mm -hmm. an oranger kind of color down this way. Yeah. Huh. Now when you do your painting, you, you would paint that's so as if you were painting on a... So when, yeah. you have, when you have a flat area of color mm -hmm. in a painting, yeah. Typically, there's some sort of you know value and or color transition happening within that mm -hmm. to keep it from going totally flat. So this is a way of entertaining the eye and keep making that square of color as beautiful as possible. Wow. Maybe you can zoom right in on that. Yeah, I'll try. You can see that well. But zoom it with this. Uh, you can just put the camera up towards it. Okay. I think. Yeah. Okay. So Very basically, good. that's what I'm that's what I'm going for with this. Wow. Very awesome. You just hit the red button.